Welcome again to Wickerson Studios, where I'm focusing on the GH Python node geometry to the point and beyond. The reason I'm doing this series is really not about um, memorizing. It's about understanding and breaking down things right to their basics. And the way I'm doing that is let's take this little blurb off temporarily. Um, we'll turn the preview off. We'll go into our window. Like I said, most data is being generated right between the X and Y axis on the flat plane and we'll go into how to create a conditional example and this is called uh, to the point and beyond which is exactly what we're doing so i'm going to zoom in and start another script from scratch and as you've seen i've started to bring in some user objects which are a way of labeling things and customizing your ribbon tools maybe you're not interested in customizing ribbon tools and you're more interested in icon plugins but i am actually very interested in knowing uh more how to program within Grasshopper, and I hope this is uh, helpful to a few people out there. Uh, let's go into Maths and grab ourselves a Python node and start. And as we script, after the editor is opened up, I like to watch things as they progress. Uh, we're just uh, keeping this file updated. All files will be available um, for those that are interested in going a little deeper into the Patreon site that I have. Um, but otherwise, you could pretty much do these all from these online uh, free video tutorials. Let's get rid of everything so we go into the practice of getting in the habit of doing things. So conditionals, I'm not going to be using Rhino geometry. I'm going to import Rhino script syntax. I'm going to use my autocomplete as much as I can. I'm going to bring that in as RS. And consistently keeping things, uh, you'll see one script builds to the next. And it's a very uh, thorough series that I am playing off of the book uh, GH Python Computational Design. Uh, it's called GH Python Computer Aided Geometric Design, which was made, and it's in Chinese, but uh, uh, the scripts can be translated and they can be manipulated uh, just by reading through the pages. So I'm going to try and get through that book in this series and certainly add to it and, and play with it and make it a little more interesting with Wickerson Studio Flare. So let's make ourselves a points list, and we do that by creating an array or a list uh, with square parentheses, and I like to have those stand out at the beginning. And I'm going to go through my iteration again of I in range uh, X. I'm going to keep that the same. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to jump over to my node and ensure that I have my list item uh, item access. And I'm going to set that over the integer because I know I'm dealing in a range and I need X to remain. I want to see that after I hit uh, return. It's tabbed in so my function will work in Python. And I'm going to have my conditional. If X, uh, well, let's say if I, the iteration number, is less than, uh, y, and we'll introduce a new variable, and you'll have to put a colon on that as well. We can do something, but in, in that sense, uh, if x is less, if it's less than y, it probably doesn't matter that this is an integer, but for consistency's sake, I think I will keep it an integer at this time. What would we do? Well, we'll create a point variable that will equal rs dot, and we're going to add point, and then it will tell us exactly what we need at the bottom. We haven't been looking down here for a while, but you'll see that the add point Gives you a great example of just hard coding in one, two, three. But what we're going to add in is uh, uh, to make it interesting, we will add point and use the iteration values. So we will bring i into here, we will bring zero into the y, and we will bring zero into the z, keep it flat on the plane. Uh, and then we have to append that list. So points is a list, we have to append it. And after appending it, you'll see it goes dark. We'll append it with the points. Now that's one conditional. What happens when we go backspace is we could do else. We're not going to do LF right now. We're not going to make uh, multi things. We're just going to do else. If that isn't the condition, you can just end it. You don't have to say what the next condition is because it already knows it either is true or not. And you can just turn that point into a, another Rhino script, add point. And we will turn that into, uh, let's take it and make the point be at I and then add a slider uh, Z. Uh, we'll introduce a new variable and we'll introduce after that uh, another slider. Uh, we'll make that a float so it's fluid. And at this point we brought in some integers. So let's just double click and hit two uh, as an integer. And that'll be X. Uh, we can copy that. And we can have that set a different value for y. So we'll bring the numbers up to 8 by 6. And then our float value will just bring the 12.0 because I might, eh, ah, that's kind of high. Let's just take it into 4.9 so we can play off the z direction and move that in different directions as we go. Um, so we've introduced z and we brought it in correctly. That point's done. And if that's the case, because of the else condition, we will points append with uh, points again. So you just keep updating your list. 
uh, as you go. And there we go. And now you want to leave this whole loop and you want to do your output points. And I'm going to use the same pattern that I've been doing, outs equaling out, uh, equaling points. And if I run that, I shouldn't have a problem. But I do have a problem over here that I haven't set my points out. And like I said, you can test all these things at point, point throughout the whole thing. But I'm feeling pretty confident in the script. It was fairly simple that I can do my points underscore out. And I should have something. And once again, what we should make the habit of is grabbing panels so we actually can understand when there's uh, problems in our script, in our canvas window. I'm just going to shoot this one down a little bit. And I'll just cut and paste that one. And we'll take that to the points output. And we will run it and see if we get anything. And there we go. We do have our point list. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, what happens when I start? Without even looking at it geometrically in the window screen, you should start to be able to visualize why this is doing what it does. Why this is allowing this to move. Why Z is actually starting to change that data. And that's where the, the computational artist starts to visualize data. And so let's just close that out and see what exactly is happening in that. I have a system that might best be appreciated on all views. And maybe in this window, top view, I'm not sure, uh, top view might be the tool. That if X is, well, I'll keep it in perspective since I want to get people thinking three-dimensionally. You can see that the Y, if X is greater than Y, then different points are generated. If X is uh, greater than Y, then obviously we default to the Z axis. Uh, actually, I don't believe we vault to the, we stay within the Z axis as the points. The Z is not influenced. But if X starts to climb... If Y starts to climb higher than X, you can actually play off of, at least I believed you could. Where's my data? When do I start to get my Y? When do I start to get my Z? Um, there it is, when the points get actually more. Uh, so that's that's an interesting little plug of where I'm pulling that data and where that actual data is moving. So I think that's pretty interesting. Um, the Z is always staying. Uh, I'm not sure why Z... I'm going to have to take a look in here at my script again and see exactly. I put Z in the Y axis. So that was definitely not what I wanted to do. I wanted to leave that at zero and I wanted to put my Z over here. So when when your data doesn't line up uh, to what you were conceiving it would do, there's where I wanted to jump. I wanted the Y, I wanted the Z to be able to be controllable if X was uh, greater than Y. Otherwise, Z has no effect on anything. So if X starts to climb higher than Y, the Z axis starts to go up and down. So I go back and forth from being a Canadian living in America, referring to Z and Z differently, if that's a little confusing to people. Anyhow, that's it. So we'll bring the X all the way up. We'll have the Y count that can adjust. Then we have a conditional on the Z to raise and lower whenever we want. And we start to visualize the data. And, and I don't think you have to go more complex and slow your script down by pulling in surfaces, which is the tendency for sculptors with mesh spheres and other things, it's quad spheres is if you need to visualize this, you will start to slow the script down but because it's so small. But you can see even then the slowing down of the script as it runs spheres, it might be best to bring in something that uh, is uh, a little more, uh, let me grab a mesh. Uh, uh, well, it's going to be a different size. Uh, as soon as you start bringing in more NURBS uh, surfaces and geometries and complexities, it's going to slow your script down. So if you can keep all the learning on a level of points, and this is even prior going in and grabbing yourselves curves and interpolating and outputting and bringing in nerve surfaces and having to see these, that will slow down again if you use the pipe tool. So hopefully this is making sense to people that have actually played around a little bit. But for those that want to visualize and see things and start to create things, that moves pretty fast in the pipe tool. It's actually a pretty fast one. So that, that's a nice little piece of geometry. And let's just, for fun, let's have a little iter uh, enumeration, uh, which is tucked into the caps just for fun and double click. Um, and just with a little quotes, you can type in uh, 0 0.2. And now we can enumerate through. Um, that's not what I meant. I meant to type in 0 0.2 without the quotes because I don't want a panel. I actually want a slider. You can see that I can roll this through a capped end and a round end. And there, you've got a nice little program that does a little uh, node work, a little post node work in Grasshopper. And you're building some interesting geometries. And you're doing it computationally because you're not building this CAD in the Rhino window. You're not just building it on the grasshopper canvas to make it parametric. You are computing things and you are thinking programmatically within the Python node. And that's what this series is for. And I don't want you to memorize these things. I want you to completely understand them, start to understand the dot notation, and really start scripting some interesting things and sharing it within the sites that we have online. Uh, I'll work privately with people that want to go onto my Patreon, but right now it's about getting those basics out and understood so you can teach yourself.
Thanks for watching. And uh, maybe just for consistency, we'll go back into here and hit on, which brings back this monstrosity of form that I can pop that off. I think, there we go, we end up back to that awesome colorful uh, icon that I'm going to use to kind of uh, get the series thinking about what's happening. And that's it. Uh, geometry to the point and beyond GH Python at Wickerson Studios. Thank you for watching. Eight minute videos, I think.